to law seekho tharo newspaper analysis for 17th of october 2023 now it's a special edition today of our tna which will be covering the news that have come up today by the honorable supreme court in the case of the same sex marriages validity and other implications so we'll be covering today's agenda with five takeaways from the supreme court verdict and then we'll be also discussing some arguments which are made by the petitioners and the respondents the brief of which we have taken from the indian express then we'll be covering some news update which will be covering the national news international news and lastly le the legal news update which is coming from the honorable supreme court and the high court of different states in india so let us start with the special edition so first we'll discuss the five takeaways from the supreme court verdict on same sex marriage now i really want to first tell you this that it comprised of a five judge constitution bench which was headed by honorable chief justice of india d y chandrachur and on october 17 unanimously they declined to recognize the same sex marriage now uh, we have included the picture of the bench honorable c j l justice d y chandrachur justice s ravindra bhat justice p s narsimha justice sanjay kishan kaul and justice hema kohli were there now the bench comprising this honorable judges in a 3 to 2 majority verdict also declined to allow civil unions for non heterosexual couples so what happened today today the recognition to the same sex marriage was declined by the honorable supreme court and there were five key key takeaways from this particular verdict that has come up today let us discuss one by one okay now first all the five judges bench including cgi uh, chief justice of india and justice sanjay kishan call who batted for civil union so they, there was a 3 to 2 majority but in this particular take uh, take away all the five judges agreed that there is no fundamental right to marry under the constitution so there it was a unanimous judgment all the five judges agreed in this point that there is no fundamental right to marry under the constitution first the second key take take away was all five judges also unanimously agreed that that it is not possible to tweak the special marriage act 1954 making it general neutral language to allow same sex marriage so in in few of the key takeaways all the five judges were in unanimously talking about some issues and in some of the takeaways there were three to two majority so in this particular two uh, takeaways uh, the honorable bench stated that it is not possible to tweak the special marriage act by using general neutral language and allowing the same sex marriage now the petitioners asked the honorable supreme court to interpret the word marriage as between spouses instead of man and woman so there was a terminological difference which petitioners argued that no uh, it is better to use the word spouse rather than men and women alternatively the petitioners had asked for striking down the provisions of the special marriage act that are gender restrictive so so, so petitioners argued for that honorable chief justice of india said striking down a special marriage act provision would jeopardize the legal framework which is being maintained for the inter caste inter faith couples would hamper their legal framework so honorable justice said that i cannot struck down completely the special marriage act provisions he added that interpreting the special marriage act in a general neutral way would amount to judicial law making that will amount to that judiciary is making a law 
which would violate the doctrine of separation of powers because lawmaking is not the work of judiciary. It's the work of parliament, the legislature, which will make the laws. Interpretation can be done by judiciary, but here the court stated that it would be judicial lawmaking and that would indirectly uh, would violate the separation of powers doctrine. So I hope I'm clear with the two takeaways. The next takeaway was four judges, just see uh, Honorable Chief Justice of India, Justice Kosh Kaul, Justice Bhatt and Justice Narsima wrote their individual opinions. In this particular case, Justice Bhatt and Justice Kohli who concurred with Justice Bhatt and Justice Narsama formed the majority while the CGI and Justice Call wrote minority opinions in favor of extending civil union to same-sex couple. So here comes a difference of opinion in, in uh, uh, the Honorable Bench. Three judges wrote the majority opinion and two judges minority opinion which were Chief Justice of India and Honorable Justice Call, which stated that the minority open opinion stated that they favor of extending the civil union to same-sex couples. Now, here comes the question, what is civil union? Why are we talking about this? And what is this terminology called as? So, civil union refers to a legal status that allow same-sex couple specific rights and responsibilities that are normally conferred upon married couple. So what are civil union? It's a legal status. It's a status that is given to the same-sex couple, giving them rights, obligation, duties, which are given to the married couple. Although civil union resembles a marriage, it does not have the same recognition in personal law as marriage. Okay. Now, Honorable Chief Justice of India, in its opinion, and Justice Paul, in its opinion, stated that right to form union emanates from the fundamental right to freedom of speech and expression and right to life. So, what the minority open state minority opinion stated that it, it it comes from the fundamental right to life and fundamental right to speech and expression. The minority view also stated that civil union status same-sex couple must be extended the bond of rights that heterosexual couples are entitled to. But here, this was a minority opinion that was coming from uh, Chief Justice of India and Honorable Justice Call. So they were in favor of giving the civil union to same-sex couple, giving them rights. Now, the fourth major takeaway from this particular judgment was the bouquet of rights, all five judges took note of the center stand that a high-level cabinet committee will be formed and which will look into the rights that can be conferred on non-heterosexual couples. So what did what did court said? Court stated that court stated that the centers a stand that a high level cabinet committee will be made and will be formed for conferring the rights on non heterosexual couples this would range from opening bank accounts same sex spouses being a beneficiary for the provident fund or giving medical decisions on behalf of the other spouse or pension and inheritance rights to such spouses so here comes that the rights and the obligations and the book of rights that we are talking about will be conferred on a high level committee which would be formed uh, by the cabinet and this was a center stand in which all the five judges were uh, took the note of the same now five the fifth takeaway very important takeaway uh, for this was the minority view by honorable just uh, chief justice of india uh, Honorable Justice Chandrachud and Justice Sanjay Kishan Kaul struck down specific guidelines by the Center Adoption Resource Authority to the extent that it disallows same-sex or unmarried couples from jointly adopting a child. 
so this was the minority opinion where it is struck down or this allowed the same sex or unmarried couples from jointly adopting a child chief justice of india in his opinion said that it is discriminatory to assume that only married heterosexual couples can provide a safe space for raising the children so the fifth takeaway was related to the adoption rights that petitioners were demanding so the fifth takeaway in which the minority view disallowed same sex or unmarried couples from jointly adopting a child so these were five major takeaways which were there in today's supreme court verdict on same sex marriage and they have ultimately left this particular to the center's choice to the parliament's choice to make laws and accordingly uh, move forward with it so i hope uh, the takeaways were very exhaustive and brief and if you have any doubts regarding this particular judgment uh, please put it in your comment section we can discuss on it further now coming up to the uh, to the extended version of this particular edition we really wanted to tell you and summarize you what were the specific arguments that each side were putting before contesting the um, case before the honorable supreme court so this particular hearing spanned for 10 days in april and may and it the proceeding were done before the five judges bench as we discussed and it was live streamed for the public so it was a very phenomenal uh, revolutionary step by the honorable supreme court the right to marry will mean lgbtq ia plus couples can avail the benefits and the right that come with the institution of marriage such as insurance adoption and inheritance now let us recap about what petitioners argued and what respondent argued and how this particular case moved forward and where we are landing this judgment today before the supreme court so is that a justified judgment in your opinion or not please put it in the comment section i really want to know what our present youth thinks and how they interpreted the law uh, in their own opinion so let us discuss on this in the comment section we'll give you the answers also okay the petitioners argued that marriage brings several rights so they had a very brief argument that when we marry each other there are very right privileges obligations which are bestowed and protected by law on each other okay so the opening arguments uh, on uh, the senior advocate mr mukul rohatgi argued that right to marry for a non heterosexual couple is implicit so they they link this particular argument to the constitution and they stated that it is implicit in article 14 which is equality article 15 that is non discrimination article 16 that is equality of opportunity in public employment article 19 that is freedom of speech and article 21 that is right to life especially after the supreme court ruling in navtej singh was johar versus union of india 2018 which decriminalized the homosexuality by striking off 377 ipc and in case putta swami versus union of india 2017 which upheld the fundamental right to privacy so the first argument of the petitioner was linking this particular uh, you know right with the constitution of india the fundamental rights enumerated in that however the themes like the inclusion of lgbtqia plus couples in special marriage act foreign marriage act the minimum ma marriageable age for such couples and the impact of such marriage on children was also discussed throughout the hearing besides this uh, there was the party delhi commission for protection of child right which were advocated they also advocated for recognition of such marriages and filed an intervention to assess the court on the impact of those marriages on children so they also advocated in this particular matter so the first opening argument was linking this particular case to the constitution fundamental right now the second major argument which petitioners made was about special marriage act 
now mukul rohadi sir argument centered around the interpretation of the special marriage act that the same is rewarded to read marriage as between spouses instead of man and woman as we discussed further also that they wanted to change the terminology of changing man or woman to uh, spouses beside this senior advocate menaka guruswami added that right to marry is accompanied by several benefits and rights such as pensions provident fund medical assistance uh, you know giving uh, you know all the insurance policy we we require some nominations so that are the rights subsequently um, senior advocate also pointed under the section section 4 of special marriage act which refers to general neutral terms of marriage between two per between any two persons however simply amending the special marriage act isn't enough a constitutional declaration of marriage is needed similar to that of heterogeneous group he said indicating the supreme court recognition of same sex marriage will eventually lead to a situation where society accepts it okay so once that marriage gets a constitutional validity once that marriage gets a legislative validity so the petitions argued that once we get this society ultimately will accept it the court need to push society to acknowledge the same sex marriage obviously because it gets a it gets a validity it gets a validation from the court under the court of law additionally rohadki suggested that without an interpretation the court could register marriages under registration act 1908 so uh, the uh, it it also stated that the registration can be done under the registration act 1908 now the senior advocate abhishek manu singh we also said that marriage equality must encompass the full spectrum of sexual orientation and not just the gay lesbian binary he advocated removing the 30 day notice period under section 5 of the special marriage act which requires party to give 30 day public notice of their intention to marry now this is a very uh you know phenomenal argument which was made by senior advocate abhishek manu sang we sir the public notice which will be then displayed in the marriage office sir's office inviting potential objections to the marriage however sangvi said that this invites unwarranted interference into the vigilant groups and family members which violate their individual privacy now let us understand this point in a practical way so it stated that a 30 day notice needs to be put before they are intending to marry so whenever in the marriage registrar office the 30 day notice is put it is ultimately hampering the right to privacy individual right to privacy and autonomy if the two persons are ready to marry why there is an objection point or why there is a clause in which other people can object to this particular marriage so this point talked about that particular framework now the concern relating to the protection of poor persons from violence in their natal homes was also advocated by uh, brinda grover who also suggested reading atypical marriages recognized by mental health act 2017 within the sma so uh, uh, advocate brinda grover also talked about the violence that poor people uh, face nowadays so i hope the petitioner's argument in perspective of special marriage act is clear now minimum marriageable age on the question of this particular point the petitioners argued that the minimum age of marriage for non heterosexual couples submitted that for lesbian couple the minimum age should be 18 years while for gay couples it should be 21 years for transgender couple the same age would apply based on their gender they identify with so the court also the petitioners also argued about the minimum marriage about under the under under if they recognize so what with the minimum marriage for gay couples what with the minimum marriage for lesbian couples and same with the uh, transgender now foreign argument under the foreign marriage act appearing for the indo american sex same sex couple who, whose marriage was registered in texas usa senior advocate geeta luthra argued that 
recognition of their marriage in India under Foreign Marriage Act, contending that only a marriage against international law could be denied recognition under the Act. So, uh, there was a representation from a USA-based couple also, which was being argued by a senior advocate, Geeta Luthra. Since that wasn't the case here and the couple marriage was legally recognized in US, Luthra sought similar recognition of their marriage in India. So that couple already got registered in US taxes and uh, uh, their advocate, uh, you know, argued that uh, they got, they want similar recognition of their marriage in India. Okay. Now, recognition of fundamental rights. Informing the court on the presence of invalid core marriages that already exist in a society, senior advocate Jaina Kothari said that Non-granting LGBTQIA plus persons the right to marry and a family, have a family, would amount to their violation of their rights against discrimination on the ground of sex, caste, religion, etc. She too, she too pushed for a general neutral interpretation for the Special Marriage Act. Reiterating, the advocate stated that uh, the queer community's fundamental right to marry State could not deny marriage equality on the ground of impracticality as the discriminatory laws were created by it. Stating the lack of recognition of LGBTQIA plus persons marriage right will deny them equal protection of law. Senior Advocate Raju Ramachandra said that marriage also offers them societal protection. So this were few arguments. There were many advocates which were contending this particular petition. And everybody has their own points under different law, as we discussed under Special Marriage Act, Constitution, Minimum Marriageable Act, Foreign Marriage Act, and recognition of the fundamental rights. So, these were all the arguments that were argued from the petitioner's side. Okay. Now, there were some additional arguments also under Transgender Persons Protection Act, where Cure person's right to marry has already been recognized under Transgender Persons Protection Act 2019, flowing from 2014 NALSA judgment. Now, advocate Karuna Nandi argued that all poor identities are part of his term. 2019 Act prohibits discrimination against transgender persons, including denial or unfair treatment in educational establishments, services, employment, and health care. Now, now the court, the petitions are also argued that civil unions are not enough. On the final day of argument, senior advocate uh, Abhishek Manu Sangvi sir, uh, told the bench that civil union as permitted in some countries is not the solution to what same-sex couples are asking for. So they just don't want only the civil union rights. They, are, they, they want something more than that. Civil unions are not an equal alternative and do not address constitutional anomalies presented by excluding non-heterosexual couples from the institution of marriage. Further, he said that this exclusion sends a message that it is legitimate to differentiate between the commitments of heterosexual and non-heterosexual couples by indicating that the latest marriage are not as significant as real marriages. So very important statement that is coming from their advocate states that it the, the exclusion clearly sends a message that the marriages which is done between the heterosexual and non-heterosexual couple by indicating that the marriages are not significant as real marriages. So this was all about the petitioner's argument. Now, what the respondent argued? The respondent, including the central government, the National Child Right Body, NCPCR, and a body of Islamic scholars called the uh, Jamiat Ulama A. Han, opposed the petitions. Okay. Now, on the maintainability and the Special Marriage Act, there was the following argument, which was done by Solicitor General of India, Tushar Mehta, that raised the preliminary objection on the court jurisdiction to hear the case. And the court responded that it would deal with the aspect of maintainability at the later stage. Later, he argued that 160 laws would be impacted in the process of bringing marriage equality. 
So if the Special Marriage Act comes under the picture and we give a recognition to the same-sex couple, then ultimately, indirectly, 160 laws will be impacted. Consequently, he said that Parliament is only forum to make such laws, adding that the lawmakers had a conscious intent to include only heterosexual marriages to the Special Marriage Act. Mr. Tushar Mehta said that the Act's character and intent cannot be altered. So, uh, the, uh, Solicitor General of India stated that the lawmaking process is to the Parliament's forum and not to the judiciary. Now, legitimate state interest in regulating marriage. So, uh, Mr. Tushar Mehta argued that state has a legitimate interest in regulating the marriage while citing aspects such as age of consent, prohibiting of bigamy, you know, prescription of prohibited marriages, judicial separation and divorce. So, uh, he emphasizes the future where arguments on freedom of sexual orientation and autonomy could be raised to challenge the prohibition of incense. The centre also suggested to form a committee which would be headed by the cabinet secretary to address the human concerns of the same-sex couples without legally recognizing their relationship as marriage. So centre suggested of forming a committee which will be headed by the cabinet secretary to address the human resource, human concerns of same-sex couples. Now, what this particular law, what respondent argued that which will impact on children? Appearing for the child rights by the NCPCR, among others, Ashwari Bharti submitted that while the concept of gender may be fluid, the concepts of mother and the motherhood not. So, uh, the Assistant Solicitor General also argued about the concept of gender maybe, which will be fluid, but the concepts of mother and motherhood are not. Now, how different states responded? Meanwhile, the center informed the top court that it had received responses from seven states on plea seeking legal recognition for same-sex marriages, while Rajasthan, Assam, Andhra Pradesh opposed the plea. The remaining four, that, that is Sikkim, Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh and Manipur, sought more time. So there were representation from the various states also, which some of the states declined, but some of the states sought for more time. Now, there were other respondents also which argued, now Jam, uh, Jam, Jamiat Ulma A. Hind through senior advocate Kapil Sibbar argued that it's a very dangerous proposition to seek a declaration validating same-sex marriages from the court as parliament isn't likely to do much. Senior advocate Arvind Datar also for respondent argued that if same-sex marriage is declared a fundamental right, future legislation of parliament will not be able to go back. He also said that while the ruling in Navtej or Shafi in Jahan were monocentric, the present dispute is polycentric, one that will affect several legal positions, possibly wrecking collateral damage in its wake. Now, I think Th this is very exhaustive that we have put it up for you guys that what were the petitioner's argument, what were the respondent's argument and what is the five key takeaways of the today's verdict. We really want to know you guys as a student, what do you think about this particular matter and do tell us in the comment box that what is your take on this particular matter which went off today and what are your opinion on the Supreme Court verdict? So do let us know. We really want to know your opinions as well. Now, let us start with the national news of the day. NTPC shines as the only Indian public sector undertaking uh, to feature in Forbes World Best Employers 2023 list. So NTPC Limited has been recognized as the World Best Employers 2023 in the Forbes Forbes uh, World Best Employer list. This is a testimony that the people practices at NTPC are at par with the top companies in the world. Now, what is the background? The particular list uh, is ev released every year, which is published through independent market research to identify top 700 companies, which offer exciting working and a positive environment opportunities 
for training and career advancement. Forbes partnered with market research firm Statistica to create the seventh annual list of the world best employers this year. Now, Jharkhand CM Hemant Soren unveils mascot Juhi for Women's Asian Champion Trophy 2023 in Ranchi. Shri Hemant Soren, who is the Honorable Chief Minister of Jharkhand, has unveiled the mascot for the Hockey Women Asian Championship Trophy 2023 at Rachi, Jharkhand. The mascot has been named Juhi, which is being inspired by the popular elephant at Betla National Park. Now, speaking on this occasion, Honorable Chief Minister stated that as the Jharkhand Women's Asian Champion Trophy Rachi 2023 is about to begin in two weeks, it's an honor to present Juhi, the official mascot for the prestigious tournament. The mascot is inspired by the inspirational story of Juhi, the elephant that has become synonyms with the beautiful Betla National Park. Chale? Next national news. Udaipur city of lakes likely to be India's first wetland city. So it has been likely to be first wetland city and an enchanting surroundings lake, port, place, palaces and historical significance is in the race to earn the prestigious title of India's first ever wetland city. Rajasthan government is actively working towards obtaining this recognition for Udaipur. The Environment and Forest Department has chosen Udaipur based on criteria set by Ramsar Convention for International Significance. Now, currently there are 42 wetland cities worldwide. In India, both Udaipur and Bhopal are weighing for the remarkable distinction for being recognized as India's first wetland city. Chale? Mumbai ranks 19th, Bangalore 22nd in Knight Frank Global Prime Residential Index. Now, a London-based property consultant, Knight Frank, has ranked Mumbai 19th and Bangalore 22nd, New Delhi 25th in Global Prime Residential Index. Bangalore becomes the second highest ranked Indian city on the index, climbing to 22nd position from 77th position in quarter 2 of 2022. Now, international news. IOC section approves proposal for five additional sports for Olympic Games Los Angeles 2028. Now, the five sports were proposed by the Olympic Organizing Committee as a package of their addition of the Games only and were reviewed and supported by IOC Olympic Program Commission and Executive Board. Now, which are baseball, softball, cricket, T20, flag football, lacrosse success and squash have been officially included as additional sports on the program of Olympic Games Los Angeles 2028. Now, baseball, softball have been a part of the program at several editions of the Olympic Games, most recently at Tokyo 2020. So, this were the five additional sports for Olympic Games Los Angeles 2028. Daniel Loba, elected Ecuador's youngest president, pledges to rebuild the country. Now, the youngest president, Daniel Nobo, has won Ecuador's president, presidential election, going to rebuild the South American country, which is struggling with the weak economy and rising crime and violence. Now, he is just 35 years old, a surprise qualifier for the runoff in the early election, has pledged to improve the economy and create jobs for young people, as well as to house dangerous criminals on prison ships. Now, Nobo formed his own party that is National Democratic Action ahead of the election. It won the third highest number of seats in August legislative elections. NASA launches Psyche, a mission to explore a metal asteroid. We recently studied this news that NASA would be launching a Psyche, really a hunk of mostly metal. Uh, a journey to the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter to find out. Now, um, the, about the NASA's launch, uh, unfavorable weather forecast for seemingly flawless flight just ov over an hour after the launch, the Psyche spacecraft detached from the upper stage of Falcon Heavy rocket. So NASA has launched 
a mission to explore a metal asteroid which will be between Mars and Jupiter to find out. Dubai soars as world fastest recovering services hub in 2023. Dubai, a global economic powerhouse, has proven its metal as the world fastest recovering destination in the service sector. This achievement has underpinned Dubai's standing as a leading city that defies economic challenges. Dubai's success story in the first half of 2023 is marked by significant growth in key sectors including transportation, wholesale retail trade, finance, insurance, accommodation, food services, real estate, information and communication and manufacturing. So Dubai source as world's fastest recovering services hub in 2023. The legal update which is coming from the Karnataka High Court in the case of Rajiv and others and State Bank of India. Company's liability to repay check amount not affected by changes in office holders. The Karnataka High Court has held that a check dishonor case that the legal obligation to repay the amount associated with the checks is not altered by changes in office holders and burden of proof rest with the company or its officers to rebut the presumption of liability. This particular case relates to Section 139 of the Negotiable Instrument Act, which stated that chairman of a company or other officers who sign the check remain liable unless they can present evidence to prove that Checks were not issued for payment of legally enforceable debt or liability. So very important judgment because this is a prominent, um, you know, question under Section 139 of the Negotiable Instrument Act in the Judicial Services Examination. So please do take a note of this particular case. Now, the next legal update coming from the MP High Court in the case of Abdul Jamil and others was the state of Madhya Pradesh through police station STF ATF Bhopal. It stated that the non-production of accused for extension of judicial custody alone would not entitle them to default bail. The court clarified that a mere non-production of the accused at the time of extension of judicial custody does not automatically make them entitled for the grant of default bail, which is mentioned under Section 167, Clause 2 of the CRPC. Now, it was a single judge bench, which was headed by Justice Dinesh Kumar Paliwal, which stated that when the accused has not moved any application for grant of default bail before the charge sheet is filed or before an application is moved for the extension of judicial custody, the accused cannot be released on default bail solely on the ground of non-production of accused physically or virtually before the special judge. Now, another legal update which is coming from the Kerala High Court in the case, I think we'll add the case tomorrow, uh, which relates to 498A IPC, couple living together under marriage agreement, not husband wife, no prosecution under 498 IPC. So the High Court has acquitted a man and his family who were convicted for cruelty against a deceased woman on the finding that the parties were living together as husband and wife based on a marriage agreement and their marriage was not solemnized. So the court stated that since the marriage between the first division petitioner and the deceased Chandrika was not solemnized and they were living together on the basis of a marriage agreement, there was no legal sanity in the eyes of law. They have to be treated as person living in relation and they are not husband and wife and in order to attract an offence punishable under 498 IPC. Okay. Now that's all for the today's special edition of the TNA. Uh, I really want to make a note that if you uh, guys want to revise your previous TNA, we are putting the daily quiz link in the description. Please do attend that quiz that will help you to revise your previous TNA of the day. So, examination purpose of you will be Secondly, uh, the people, the students who are asking for the PDF of this particular TNA, we are working on the system and soon, and soon I will let you know that how you can download the PDF of this particular 
tiene. Okay, thank you guys and take care.